Golf is probably the least exciting sport of all time. I don't know how the hell people watch it. But playing the game isn't nearly as boring, and that includes the video games. Here's a golf game from the early days of the NES, 1985 to be exact, simply titled Golf. There are three modes, one player stroke play, and two players stroke play or match play. Stroke play is decided by who has the least amount of strokes, and match play is decided by who wins the most holes. Pressing up and down will change your golf club. I don't know shit about golf, so I just usually take guesses on what I should use. Before you hit the ball, the first thing you gotta do is aim your shot with the arrow that points out from wherever your ball is on the map screen. There are 16 angles you can choose from in the full 360 degrees, but that's not a whole hell of a lot because there'll be times when the hole lies in between your target options, so you'll have to pick the better option and hope for the best. There's also a wind meter that usually doesn't make that much of a difference unless it's blowing like 15 miles an hour, which doesn't happen all that much. After you choose your club and line up your shot, it's time to hit the damn thing. A meter underneath you determines the power and accuracy with each shot. Pressing A starts the meter up, sending the arrow across to the left. Pressing A again will send the arrow back to the right. The closer the arrow gets to the edge, the more powerful your shot is. Then you'll want to stop the arrow by pressing A again as close to the white portion of the meter as you can. The closer you get to it, the more accurate your shot is. Some clubs have smaller and larger accuracy meters, although the putter has no accuracy meter. It's all about how much power you put into it. Speaking of putting, it's a pain in the ass because of how powerful they made the putter. If you don't press A consecutively, like within one millionth of a second in between intervals, you'll probably put the ball all the way across to the other side of the fucking green. Not to mention that you have to take into account the uphill and downhill slopes. The short game is easily the game's biggest flaw. Another complaint is how every single tree is technically out of bounds, even if it's in between them or if it rolls to the ground but lines up at the very tip of a tree. It wouldn't really be so bad if there wasn't so many goddamn trees on the course. Aside from the out of bounds hazard, there are also quite a few water hazards and sand traps, so there's a challenge to be had and it's not a monotonous stretch of grass and trees. But there is repetition because it's always the same 18 holes every game. This game has its problems, but despite all of that, if you have another person to play with, then the game makes a playable time killer as a backdrop to some music and conversation. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.